Welcome back, bike farmers, for part two on this Mongoose ATB, the Chrome Stallion. Um, part one, we went through and kind of took everything apart and cleaned it up and uh, put on some new handlebars and did a few things. And now it's time to start uh, reassembling this bicycle. So here we go. I'm going to start with uh, new tires and tubes and get the wheels on it and uh, put the levers on the handlebars, you know, that sort of thing. And, um, start putting this thing back together. So thanks for coming back. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, go for it. Um, it'd be great, uh, greatly appreciated. It would help me a lot just getting started here. Um, and uh, give this video a, a like, watch some of the other ones and uh, do the same. All right, here we go. Trying out some new tires here. Some Axis DTH, they're a nice uh, on-road kind of gravel bike trail sort of tire. 26 by 2.15. I really like these older mountain bikes, the ATBs, as they truly should always be called, all-terrain bicycles. But for me, the Super Nobby tires don't really do it. And, you know, unless you're aggressively out in the woods on single track, you don't need a whole lot of tread. Even slick tires do just fine on the gravel. So here's the wheel that we cleaned up in part one. <clears throat> per the use, I always like to find the direction. Most tire treads have a little arrow that they form. I always like that going forward. General practice for me is to put the logo at the valve stem. I think the most sensible thing to do which is generally what I default to if I can figure out what the most sensible thing is to find the tire pressure min and max and put that by the valve stem. That should be the standard everywhere, but even I don't do that. I do the, the label thing. Maybe I'll switch one of these days. But doesn't it make sense just to have the recommended PSI right there by the valve? where you're already looking. Okay, I've got some brand new tubes here. I buy these puppies in bulk. 26 inch Schraders. All right, get my compressed air. It's early in the morning, so my compressor kicks on at nine o'clock. So I don't know if I'll get 50 pounds in here, but it's probably about good for these tires. I don't even know. I didn't read them. But generally with these nice plump 26 by twos, 40, 50 pounds, gives you a nice firm feel, but still a little bit of cushion. Every tire is a little different too on where, where it feels best. These don't seem to have a really thick sidewall. Pretty supple feeling. We'll see how they roll once I get the bike built. Go take it for a ride. This is my first time using these tires. I just uh, was looking at what's out there, and these seem like a good size and a good tread pattern for what I like. I like to kind of fill them halfway and then go around and give it a good little massaging. Yeah, these feel nice and supple. I like supple. Make them firm. You can dial in pressure later once we get things together. What's it say here? 35 to 80 PSI. So you can run these at pretty high pressure if you'd like. Nice wide range. It's good. Plenty of options. Tire pressure is a personal preference for the most part. 
you know, you have some really broad guidelines printed on the side of the tires and you can pick whatever you want in between. A lot of people out there that think there's a best for everyone. I just don't buy it. I don't really know which way this wheel wants to go. I don't think it matters a whole lot. here on the ground out of frame just to get things started you know the folding tires are going to give you a much more supple riding feel for the most part is nice but they sure are harder to install. He's really big park tool levers are kind of handy sometimes. They're not always the best. A plastic one, I like these plastic ones. I wear them out, but um, those are my favorite. A little bit thinner profile, still metal with a plastic coating, so the plastic slides easier getting stuff off. But when you're just leveraging stuff on, those big daddies or leveraging stuff off. Brute force. Big daddies have their place in this world. Okay. I've always been a filthy bench guy. I just like everything out. I don't mind. A little bit of mess. Pretty good at hunting down tools. I'm gonna go with the big daddy again that I just dropped on the floor. Did I forget to put a tube in there? Oh no, I got my tube in there. <laughs> Wouldn't put it past me. <clears throat> Give it a little massaging. Nice and firm. These are very cool wheels. You can see that I like the I like those rims. Got a cool profile. Very burly. You know, they used to make mountain bikes to be durable. Now they make them to be, I don't know what, fast? Lightweight, 
packed with technology and features to win the race. Back here, back on the bike. Oh. Can't get my tire through those brakes. I'm gonna let some air out. Pinch them in there. Okay, so this axle nut has kind of a built in washer. I was getting in the way of the derailleur there. But I cleaned everything up and greased it, so it came off real easy and back on. Everything's really lined up well over here. This bike is very straight, very well-built bike. Yeah. These tires are gonna be great on this bicycle. It's just what it wanted. Maybe there, we do have a bit of an alignment issue here. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna loosen the, loosen the nut and kind of hold the wheel over on that side and I'm gonna do the same here. So I loosen the nut and then really kind of, yeah, just push the, the rim over with one hand and tighten the nut down on the other and that gets the wheel in there straight and everything's much better now i'm looking down here still not perfect it's really good up here not great down there but it's good enough okay that looks really good something else i'm gonna do quick this bike off a little bit. Am I still in frame? Yeah. Seemed like I was working way down here. That's right, I got these washers. And they have a little tab that fits into the fork. I like that. Except that I didn't get this one in the right spot on the other side, so get to start over. Yeah, so if you have these washers with the tabs, theoretically, if the axle nuts were to loosen up a little bit, it buys you some time before your wheel falls off. Eventually, I'm sure it's a, a thing that has to be done now on forks. They put a little lip on the bottom of the fork. We call them lawyer lips. I'm sure somebody got sued about a front wheel falling off at some point. So, this is a pre-lawyer lip bike. This one was made in 1987. And you can see, this is a really good, I like this clearance here. Really looks natural, looks like it's right. Uh, the tire's got a little bit of a wobble. Doesn't seem to be seated real well. Hmm. 
but that's okay. We can work on that a bit in the future. Looking forward to getting some cables on this bike so the front wheel stops flopping around like that. It's coming together, folks. It's looking really good. Pedals. I've got some pedals over here that I like better. I got these are some takeoff pedals from a bike. They're cheapos, but they're a little bit bigger, more more modern platform pedal. Um, you know, the pedals that came with this bike aren't any nicer and they're smaller, kind of old school. You know, if they were like really cool, like rat trap metal ones, I'd definitely be reusing them, but let's figure out what's going on there. This bike doesn't like to be pedaled backwards. Pedals are opposite thread on the reverse thread on the left side of the bike. And then if your bike can be pedaled backwards, which that one just had a rusty chain, then you get your pedal wrench and just pedal backwards, tighten the pedal down. Get your pedals good and tight. It's a German word. How about that? Start working on these levers. Gotta find them all on my filthy bench. the talking in the background. I got some contractors here working on my house. Get these on there. All right. That's not right, is it? No, that's right. Yeah, we're good. And then, uh, how about some comfort grips? Everybody likes a good ergo grip. A little bit of hairspray. the noise it's supposed to make. smaller. These are old school bars. Alloy. Got some thick walls so we're going to need some smaller plugs. Yep, 
It is hotter than blazes out there today. Very hot and humid. Summer day in southern Wisconsin. Last week of school. Kids are all antsy and crazy. Fun time of year. All right, bars are in pretty much the right position. Should we start cabling things? Cable up these, these shifters so our handlebars don't flop around? Yeah, let's do that. I like to find a, this is just a length of housing I had laying around. And I'll seat that here and then run it up to the shifter and so I can see here I'm about four inches short so here's the piece of housing I used as a guide as a measurer and then you can see I just cut it like four inches longer and then just to kind of double check and do that and then I turn the bars and make sure that it, nothing's pulling it might be a tad long but it's better to be long than short and grab actually I'm gonna grab a poker tool so I take old spokes and uh, file down the tips, make poker tools, and put a nipple on the end, I don't know why. But they make perfect little poker tools to make sure that the holes are clear in your housing. See, it fits right in there, but you got to cut the other one the exact same size. So I just cut the other one the same size. These uh, ferrules that I have are pretty hard. You can't really squish them. I mean, you can, but they always compress a little bit. So, and I do that, and I just kind of look at it and I make sure that everything looks pretty mirrored here which it does very nice um, here's the rear loop you can see how it's all cracked and just totally disintegrating so we'll cut a new length of that Assuming the old length was good. So, I don't know. Where am I here? If you can see. Yeah. 
end. Anyway, it's all pinched together from cutting. This one's a really good example, so you gotta get your poker tool and get it in there. And you don't want to block your cable from sliding through. It needs to be unobstructed. One, two, what is this shifter? One, two, three, four, five, six, so this, this is a seven speed shifter. I think that works with six speed. It's been a minute since I've dealt with old six speed stuff. I think five, six, seven, and eight are all the same. It's the same chain, same cable pull indexing. So you'll just have a couple of dead shifts. Okay, cables. A couple of brand new ones. So I'll move the lever out. This one does. Gotta, gotta find its home. Sometimes if you bend the end of it with a little bit of a curve, then it'll follow the shifter. The curvature of the shifter pod. Give you some more options on the other end of where to find the the hole. Hmm. What is going on here? I am struggling. There it is. Take a little bit of tri-flow and kind of let gravity pull it down. Take your fingers. And... These are slick stainless steel cables and the tri-flow doesn't hurt. This bike is also old enough that these cable stops are not slotted. Makes maintenance a little bit tougher. It was nice when they figured that out. It's fun to work on old bikes and just the stuff we take for granted these days. It wasn't the first thought back then, you know. Things were done one way for a very long time, and it's just a slow, that's the way technology goes. It's just a slow progress. Then the industry gets big enough where all the major brands have a team of engineers that can come up with all sorts of problems to solve. Oh, this is kind of neat. I'm gonna show you. Oh. You know, you want your shift cable to go along the stay, but because of the U-brake, it gets in the way. So the cable actually goes through the brake boss. 
See that? So it's all metal on metal in here. The cable guides are metal. So I'm gonna apply a bunch of grease and just really kind of work it in there. And I'll wipe off that extra at some point. But for now, it's just good to get all that grease in there. A little bit of tri-flow there. Look at that cable stop, huh? Just a little dabble, do ya? These old Shimano derailleurs are just wonderful. Down here in some nether regions. Again, just put a bunch of grease on that cable because these guides are metal. Very well built bicycle frame. Just dabbing a little bit of tri flow everywhere I can. As I go, just kind of a force of habit, or by force of habit. Sorry about all that background noise. Like I said, I got some contractors in here doing some work upstairs. All right, the bike is shifting. So actually, before I do that, I'm gonna and it stretch the cables a little bit. They, I'm guessing they both moved a little bit. Housing compresses, cables stretch, ferrules seat, all sorts of things happen. Cleaning as I go. Shine up that derailleur a smidge. Let's see how it indexes. Pretty good. 
Oh yeah. We gotta get into that bottom bracket too. I think I am gonna pull it apart. Um, I wonder, should we do that now? Before we get going too far on brakes? Doesn't matter. Should have done that before I put the wheels on. I'm gonna do the brake cables quick because doing that uh, U-brake, kinda gotta flip the bike upside down anyway. So there's a, for the rear brake, it's got a cable stop down here and we get to make a choice. It's right in the center of the tube. Do we go on this side of the bike or do we go around? I think we go on this side of the bike, on the this side of the down tube. And we're gonna use this. We're about two inches short. So I'm gonna cut a little length of housing here. Find my chomper tool. Just a little bit longer. Gonna double check it for the rear brake cable. Yeah, that's really good. It's sharp. And then this one, remember I was talking in part one about losing that special ferrule? It's on my messy bench somewhere. Anyway, these front ones can be tricky. To get right but it wants to be that long ish so I always cut the front ones a little long and then trim it down oop oop there you go I'm a midwesterner oop 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 is the thing they say a little bit north of us and I think it's a combination of oops and oh no. And you just go oop. Norwegians. Those Norwegians. We're a little more German down here. Next town over has the Gemitlakite days every summer. Gemitlakite. It's a very good German word. My grandparents knew some German. Wilkie. So, I guess I did all that. Out of, out of frame. That was kind of dumb. Anyway, I just trimmed up this little piece of brake housing for the front. I'm going to put some ferrules on it. fits right in there. Here's the here's a little doodab you may remember this little guy from part one. It lives right in here somehow. I don't think it's actually the part though. Oh it fits pretty good. So this is what I was talking about where that might be just a little long. You know, this never stretches. Everything moves together, so you can really dial it in. And I'm just going to cut just a smidge off of it. <laughs> Went flying across the room. It actually scared the kitty. Yeah, see, now it's not so pinchy, spinchy. That's really good, really good. So what I was doing before when I was yammering on is you kind of find the inside of the housing and it's sharp and pokey and 
in the way. I don't know if you can see it. And you grab it with your side cutters and just give it a little quick trim. That's pretty good. And you can take your poker tool. And clean things up a little bit more and grab your five millimeter brake ferrules. Throw those on there. Then get your housing in place. Grab a couple of brake cables here. Line up my slots. That one's good. Lube the cable a bit. Another thing you can do is just put the lube right in the housing and then your cable will kind of push it through and lubricate itself as you go. And that is slicker than snot on a doorknob. I'll leave the rear one to dangle a schmidge because we're going to flip that bike upside down and do that brake here in a second. All right, so I'm lining up my slots and then turn in my barrel. Probably lube the cable. All right, so we're gonna start the cable through that way because there's it is slotted here. There is that. And then this one, I usually cut off just above the tire. And that gives me enough to work with. Okie dokie. Here's the cable hanger. on it. It'll probably be easier on the wire wheel. Kind of a hidden spot on the bike anyway. We can get it in place. I think the yeah the rear one is still connected. Well this feels backwards to me. I'm gonna switch that around. Maybe that was right. It just didn't feel right. There's two washers. How does this go together? So there's the front of it. I'd like the cable to be in the back. Try to make the front of it as clean as possible. pretty good. So, grab our cable, make sure everything's still looking good. Okay. 
So that's just finger tight for now, for safekeeping.